Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this video tutorial, we're going to be walking you through some of the new features in Chassis Sim version 3.17 that's just been released. The features that I'm going to walk you through today is features and small enhancements that should I add to your user experience in driving Chassis Sim and should really help you. And so and there are also some new features we've thrown in there to um, aid you in um, various aspects in terms of evaluating your setups and other items of apparel. So let's get started. The first thing that I'd like to bring your attention to is the edit model menu. Now, you'll see here that the edit model menu has been expanded where you can now actually navigate to all of the various car components using the menu. Now, you can still do exactly the same thing by clicking on the car components. But this um, edit uh, menu, uh, this edit uh, menu structure does exactly the same thing. So for example, if I want to access the front spring, I just click on front left spring and damper. Lo and behold, Here's my uh, front left spring and damper. Now I should also add that if you're editing in symmetric mode, which you can see that I'm doing down here, if you click on say spring damper, front left spring damper, if I apply these changes, it will apply them both to the left and the right. But clearly, if I was to toggle into asymmetric mode, as you can see, I'm now in asymmetric mode down here as indicated by this gray uh, button. If I go to front right spring, and say I change that to say a 950 spring, and I click on OK, and I'll go back to the edit mo the edit uh, model menu. I'll go to front left spring, which is 900, and the front right spring, which was 950. Now, obviously, I'm not uh, that keen for this particular F3 car to worry about uh, asymmetries, so I'll just uh, click on the main spring and uh, click on OK. And the thing about this, uh, this edit uh, model menu is that it does exactly the same function as clicking on the car components. It's just another thing to, uh, for you to use. So if you don't like clicking on the car components, you've got everything that you could click on with um, the car uh, with uh, the car graphic. You can also navigate um, through here as well. So that's an option up your sleeve if you want to use it. I should also add that, for example, for aerodynamics, if uh, you'll see here to edit right height maps, click here. That's the equivalent of clicking on the front wing. If you want to just change your aero coefficients, that brings up uh, the uh, that brings up the rear wing. So that is uh, that covers um, the modifications to the edit model menu. The other thing that we've thrown in with Chassis Sim is on the create filter curvature file. You'll see here, click here to create a curvature file from a circuit center line. This is really handy if you've been to circuits, if you're going to a circuit that you don't know. So all you need, all you need is basically straight lengths, turn radiuses, and turn angles. If you have that, you can use this little feature to generate a curvature file. Now, the actual file format that you need to create, I've set up here in an example called circuit centerline example.txt. Now, as we can see, this is our circuit center line um, example, which is our sample file for generating our curvature file from circuit radius data. So what is important here is that we have our header. One's the version number for the file. So this is going to be a subject of future expansion. Four is the number of turns. 100 is the distance in meters from the start finish straight to the beginning of turn one. 100, this is our turn radius. 90 is the number of degrees of the turn. 10 is our track width. 200 is the length of um, the uh, finish straight immediately following turn 1. And 1 indicates the sign of the turn. 1 is a right-handed turn. Minus 1 is a left-hand uh, turn. 40 is the percentage of uh, the turn length that is dedicated to turn in. And 10% uh, is the percentage of um, the turn length that is dedicated for uh, the mid corner section. So to illustrate how you actually generate that um, curvature file, you, s you click on, click here to create curvature file from, uh, from our curvature, uh, from our circuit center line. So I'll just go back to where I actually had that. So I select my circuit center line example, click on OK. And now I'm going to click on my output curvature file and I'll just whack this in circuits and I'm going to call this track 
center line example. Click on open, click on OK, and we're done. And to show you what that looks like, I'll go into edit variable group factors, I'll click on import curvature file, and I'll go to my track center line example, and that is our uh, uh, that is our curvature file generated from our circuit center line example. Now I realize this is a pretty Mickey Mouse example, but it shows you what it actually looks like, and you'll see this documented in the help file. The other feature that I'd like to bring to your attention is that we've, inc we've included a feature for independent suspensions to help you um, in terms of doing a quick sweep. What this is, is if you click on here to adjust points, you'll see that there's a flag here. Click here for symmetric load transfer. We've actually done a little bit of testing with this, and we found that this has been a very, very powerful tool to really nail down. If you want to do a front roll center, uh, if you want to do a front roll center sweep, this actually really helps. You, this is a really great tool for helping you actually nail down what or where the front roll center location is. Now, what we've done here is we we enforce symmetric load transfer through the suspension geometry links. Now. From a strictly speaking perspective, this is probably not the most accurate thing in the world to do. However, we've double checked this with um, uh, quite a few legacy examples everywhere, everything from touring cars to open uh, uh, to open wheelers, and we've actually found this is actually proven to be a very effective, uh, proven to be a uh, currently a useful tool. So that's a tool that's um, use uh, that um, we've thrown in for you to play uh, uh, for you um, uh, to play with. And so to activate that, all you've got to do is click here for symmetric load transfer and you're good to go. Now, for for, uh, for those of you who are currently using Chassis Sim version 317, you'll find the other features have been documented in the README. For those of you who aren't Chassis Sim users, by all means, contact uh, us for a demo and find for yourself what a powerful tool Chassis Sim can be.